Okay, so this is chapter six, and the first part of chapter six was just a reminder of some things that you guys learned in chapter two. So we're pretty much pretty sure that you guys can take the numbers off the periodic chart and convert them into the molar masses of the different things. This is just a quick reminder. And then um, this is the chapter that has like three different kinds of mass math in it. And so the first math was determining percent composition and the percent is the amount of the part over the whole. That's just like any percent. This isn't like a, a new thing or anything. It's just part over whole. That's a percent. And with these ones, it's percent mass. And also instead of percent composition, it can also be called percent mass. In Gencom 2, you will definitely be seeing percent mass. So it's the total mass of all of one type of element in grams over the total mass of the compound. So for example, we have carbon right here, and then we have C2H12O6. If we want to know how much carbon was in it, notice the subscript for the carbon is a 6. So we have 6 moles times, and then our 12.01 is from the periodic chart. So that's the total amount of carbon. And then we do the C12, I'm sorry, C6H12O6, we just out of those numbers, we get the 180. And that gives you your percentage over here. And you can also figure out hydrogens and oxygens. So in this example, this was like one of the simplest ones. It's the first one. We took sodium in, uh, and chloride in sodium chloride. And the molar mass of the chloride is this number. So that's what goes on the bottom. It's just the mass that you get off the chart for the, the whole thing. And then the sodium, we have sodium's mass is on top. And then we have chlorine's mass on top. And then we just go ahead and do the percentages and we get it that way. Uh, sig figs and percentages, usually they're a little squishy. You can take them out to, you know, a tenth or a, or a hundredth. It's usually fine. Um, uh, we showed an... I showed an alternate way of working these. You can take your 100, knowing that there's only two things in it. And if you solve for one percentage right there, you say 100 minus that percentage, this first one that you solve for, is going to give you your amount of chlorine. So this little section off to the side in all three cases, there's it's right here and right here. What I've done is I've said, okay, well, if we know that there's only two things in the percentage and we know one percentage, then you just subtract to get the other percentage. So don't forget that little tip. And in this bottom one, there were three things. So if you knew two of them, you could subtract them from 100 and get to your percentage. That's percent composition or percent mass. So empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio. Um, this is the second type of math. This is a pretty simple one. Uh, you've got the molecular formula. They want to know what is the molecular formula for this thing right here. So it has a molar mass. That's just from the periodic chart. You just add that up. So that 29.09, that, that's nothing new. And then they want to know there's some multiple of these numbers, and its molar mass is this 87.21. So what multiple is it? Okay, well, you take your 87.21, that's the numerator, and you divide by the mass of just like one unit, the 29.07, and you get three. So you're gonna multiply all your subscripts by three. So you're gonna get C6H15. You'll notice this is multiplying by three and by three. So it doesn't exactly, it's not like it stays a unit, it kind of becomes something else, or it can become something else. Um, but it's like this thing up here that I have a square around, it's the smallest ratios. And then anything else, the molecular formula, um, that's the largest one. So I had some examples in here. All of them were figuring out the molecular formulas, and they just, you had all different ones. And so I had to figure out the multiple, and notice part D, there's just a weird little random thing. In this case, sometimes the molecular mass is the empirical formula. They'll like try to trick you, and they'll be like, here's the molecular mass, and you're like, oh, that just is. The empirical formula. This was the math, the third type of math in this section that got more challenging, and it's just because it's time consuming. So, what you want to do with these problems is you will either be given an amount in a percentage 
or in a gram amount. If you're giving it in a gram amount, you can stop, skip step one. If you're giving a percentage, you got to do step one. So the whole thing is to do step one, you make an assumption that you have a 100 gram sample. Because if you have 100 grams, then you can say that 82.6% of 100 is the 82.6 grams. And same with hydrogen, you can say it's that many grams. So basically, the, we want to get it into grams so that we can get it into moles. And then the step two, the way we get it into moles is just like any other time getting grams into moles. It's from the periodic chart. So this is the molar mass off the periodic chart for carbon, and this is for hydrogen. And we're just taking our two masses that we got in, the early, in part one, and we're turning them into moles. Now, if those moles had come out to be pretty and perfect numbers and they didn't have decimals, then um, we could have just gone ahead and done what right down here. We could have just turned it into a formula and be done with it. However, it's not okay. You can't have those kinds of little decimals sitting around in there. You can't just round up or round down. If it's like 0.9, you can. If it's 0.1, you can round down. 0.9, you can round up, but that's it. So now what we do is we do a math trick, and that's what step three is all about. So step three right here, this is a little math trick. And you take your two molar masses and you divide by whichever one is smaller. So the 6.87 is smaller. So you end up with one mole of carbon and 2.51 moles of hydrogen. Now, most of the time this works and you get all whole numbers. So you can stop there if that happens. But if not, it's one to 2.5, it's still not okay. You gotta double check that whole number ratio. So um, if the decimal is 0.5, it's times two. And then if the decimal is 0.33, it's times 3. So you're going to multiply, because it's 0.5, you're multiplying both of the numbers, the 1 and the 2.5, times 2. And that's how you get your subscripts. I had a lot of examples of this, just because this is something that people like to ask questions about. I have some examples here, and I have some examples at the end. This was the example about the um, airplane. If you want to walk some of those, you can right in here so the work for this is is at the end oh wait actually here's sorry this is one section of some of the work so this is for victim two right here victim two and so we had all these different percentages oh no it must, it's victim one I'm sorry victim one and so we had all these percentages for these guys, and you just turn them into grams. Then you turn them into moles. So see, we turned them all into grams. Then we turned them into moles using the molar mass. And we got four different numbers. You find the smallest one, divide everyone by the smallest one. And then you get your little ratios here. So this one here turned out to be C17H21, because that's 20.9. You can round it up in and then O4. We had plenty more examples too at the end of the notes. Then we talked about molarity, it being the idea of concentration, and we talked about how you already know what when something is concentrated and when it's not. Um, kind of made a big deal about concentration though, and um, you know, the higher the molarity, the more concentrated something is. So molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. There's also this fantastic little demo here. If you watch it, it's great. This little, it's like a silent movie and it, it's really good. So this is just, let's practice doing it with problems. So like level one moles per liter. So you do four moles divided by two liters and you get the molarity. Um, some more, uh, you get, if you have a molarity and a liters, you can go from liters into moles. Remember to do this, um, unless you're super comfortable with molarity, rewrite it as moles per liter. Um, in this case, we take the liters, liters, and we're using our molarity again. We change it into moles per liter, turn it into moles. And then, then you can go ahead and turn it into grams from the periodic chart numbers. So those are all just different examples. You've got to be able to do this. Um, lots of different ways that you can do it. The last little bit is dilution. And the key with dilution is that unlike 
concentration where that bottom unit has got to be leaders. Where is it? Yeah, has got to be leaders. That's molarity. Unlike molarity, uh, when you do dilution problems, you don't have to suddenly translate something into liters. As long as both volumes have the same unit, it's okay. So here's the biggest example. It's just you take a milliliter and a milliliter, and then you um, don't have to do any conversions because they both are milliliters. And your final unit will be molarity. Notice that sometimes you're going to be doing these problems and um, there's one place where, yeah, the units are off. So look, look, here is a molarity and a liter. I meant to say milliliter and a liter. So in that case, uh, just make sure that you convert one of the two when you're putting it in the equation. Convert one of the two into either liters or milliliters. They have to be consistent. And that takes you through all the rest of chapter six. And remember at the end, you've got all these other worked problems for the airplane. If you wanted more practice on converting percentage, uh, percent composition into empirical formula.